it's an important topic, especially for the people in the postmodern times, that is us. Okay? There's a lot of misinformation about who is Mahdi, what he will do, what his significance is. And one of the drawbacks of this is, is that we put all our hopes on, you know, one day, two people, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, and the Mahdi will come and they will save us from the miseries that the Muslim Ummah is in today. I want to give the true picture and I want to first give you an overall story without narrations, without hadith. I will go into the hadith. There's plenty of ahadith to go into. But I just want to give you an overall. When you look at all the ahadith about Mahdi, what is the picture that we get? And the second question I want to answer is, about which time is the Mahdi coming? When is he going to come? When can we expect these events to happen? And how much, how much the world would have changed by that time is also a very key, important point. From the very beginning, I want to mention that this person, the Mahdi, he will be very close in personality to Umar bin Abdul Aziz, radiallahu anhu. Why? Because Umar bin Abdul Aziz was the first, what? Mujaddid of this ummah, the first reviver. He revived the ummah again. Umar bin Abdul Aziz is known as the sixth what? We know Abu Bakr, Uthman, and Ali is how many? Four. But where is the fifth? Hassan. Because the Prophet ﷺ said the Khilafah would last how many years? Hadith of Abu Dawud, 30 years. And that 30 years is only completed with the Khilafah of Hassan radiallahu anh, and then Umar bin Abdul Aziz. Six have come, and the Prophet says, this is in, in Nisai, Ibn Majah, in different places, the Prophet وسلم, said, how many Khulafa will come to this Ummah? In all, 12. So six have come, and how many remain to come? Six. Very important point. Now, the Muslim world will be in complete chaos. There will be a Khalifa. And that Khalifa would have died. Now this word Khalifa is debated amongst the Muhaddisin. What does it mean? Does it mean like Khalifa like Abu Bakr? Or does it mean Khalifa like as a king? Just put that aside. I'll put that aside for a second. But the Muslim Ummah will be in a lot of trouble. And it seems like when you read the narrations that this person, the Mahdi, will go to secure himself in safety as will be doing all the Muslims of that time. And the Prophet ﷺ said about the Mahdi that he will change himself, يُغَيِّرُهُ بِاللَّيْلِ He will change himself in one night. Just like Umar bin Abdul Aziz, you remember him? He was a normal governor, right? And then the people forced him to become the Khalifa. And then in one night, he became the most pious person of the land. In the same way, the Mahdi will be someone who is well known. He will be part of loyalty. Just like Umar bin Abdul Aziz, the first Mujaddid and the last Mujaddid of this Ummah, they will have a lot of similarities as you'll see. The reason the people will force the Mahdi, the bay'ah upon the Mahdi will be because when they will see him, they will recognize him as a personality that was well known at that time. Just like Umar bin Abdul Aziz. So just so you're clear, you know, when they told uh, Umar bin Abdul Aziz, you're the next Khalifa, he said, no, 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 I can't be the next Khalifa, I'm sorry. Right? So you guys, you take your... But then the ulama that were there, they had an ijma'ah. And they said, no, we, we have come to consensus. It is by our own free will. We choose you by our own, our own free will. So Umar bin Abdul Aziz became the Khalifa in that manner. In other words, he had the Khilafah because when the Khalifa before died, he put his name in a letter. So he's the Khalifa. But he gave that Khilafah up. And then he let the people decide. And the people decided him to become the Khalifa. So he was a legitimate Khalifa by the will of the people. Right? And this is exactly the words the Prophet ﷺ has used. I don't want to go into a lot of every single hadith that's here, but this is the words the Prophet used that there will be 12 khulafa that the ummah will agree upon. That the what? 
the Muslim world will agree upon. At this time, the Muslim world will be in a lot of chaos. And one of the qualities of this time will be that the Roman Empire will have been re-established. Meaning, what we find happening through NATO today would have reached its climax. Not only would they have a common currency, but they would have a common religion. They would have taken over Turkey by this time. They would make Constantinople their center. You know, Constantinople used to be the center of huh? the Roman Empire, right? And so they will re re-establish uh, Catholicism throughout Europe, okay? Now, where does America come into all of this? I'll talk about a little bit later. But Europe will be reestablished as a united front. And on the other side, you will have the Jewish community that will be reunited from Euphrates to the Niles. From where? Euphrates to the Niles, they'll have one empire of their own. In the middle of this will be Muslims. In the middle of this will be what? Muslims in disarray. It seems like there'll be no borders because the Ahadith say that the people of Iraq will walk to Mecca to meet the Mahdi. And the people from Sham, Syria, will go and walk to the Mahdi to meet him. Okay? So now, the Mahdi will gather the Muslims after he's forced to become the Khalifa. And at this time, the Roman Empire and the Muslims would come, have come to an alliance. They would have had what? They would have an alliance. And they will fight a common enemy. Now we're not sure exactly who this common enemy is. Some people say it's the Jewish community. Some people say it could be China, so on and so forth. I'm not going there right now. But the, the European alliance and the Muslim alliance under the leadership of the Mahdi will have a common war. Okay? And then this alliance will be broken. And the way this alliance will be broken is basically after the victory of the Muslims and the Christians, the Christians will declare this war was won because of Christianity. And some of the Muslims will be upset and this would lead to a type of disagreement and then the mutual agreements would be dissolved. Now at this point, the Mahdi will first, by the way, when he becomes a, you can say, a general, more than a statesman, when you look at his Life And by the way, the Prophet ﷺ said he would lead at least seven years, the Prophet said. This is the hadith in Nisa'i as well as Muslim and other places. He would lead for at least what? Seven years or at most till nine years, the Prophet said. So he will be a general a commander for a certain amount of time. Now, the other thing I want to mention before I go any further. Why did the Prophet ﷺ make such a big deal about this person? Why did he make such a big deal about him? Why did the Prophet ﷺ talk about him? And you find in almost of the six, like I said, four of the books of Sunan, you find abwab, chapters about the Mahdi. Which means, you know, if you find, like for example, in every single book, you'll find the chapter of Salah, right? Why? Because it's an important aspect of our deen. And so in the same way, when you find constantly the ulama writing about the ahadith and the statements of the Prophet about the Mahdi, that means it's important. Not only that, the second thing the ulama, they say, that if a person names a chapter, what? Names what? Names a chapter, that is part of the muhaddis, his aqidah. It's part of his what? After that, you can have a hadith, even the muhaddis can disagree. He can say, this is the weak hadith, or this is the authentic hadith. But when he signs a, or he labels a, a title of a chapter, it means it's important to the muhaddis, that chapter is important to the muhaddis. That information is important to the muhaddis. Anyway, so why will the Prophet, why was the Prophet talking about him? The Prophet was talking about him because of this reason. Like I said, there will be 12 khulafa, but what the Prophet wanted was that when Islam will reach its peak, when Islam will what? Reach its? When Islam will become globalized, when Islam will be about to become globalized, that there should be somebody from my family the Prophet wanted. Somebody from what? My family, who is a witness that my mission that I was sent to with as Rasulullah for all of Rasulullah for all of humanity has been completed and somebody from my family is a witness to this. The example of this is the dua that we do in our prayers every time. And this is the dua of every muttaqi person. And that is, 
of, you know, when Ibrahim والسلام, when he did dua, he said, for me and for my what? My progeny, right? That I stand before Allah and behind me is Ishaq, Ismail and Ishaq. And behind Ishaq is how many prophets? And behind Ismail is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa right? So in the same way the Prophet wanted that when I go before Allah, what? There should be people, pious people from my family. Just like Ibrahim would stand before Allah and he would have pious people before in his family, the Prophet also wanted the same thing and he wanted. And this is why when we say Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad, it's not only for Rasulullah and Ibrahim, this should be the desire of all of us. That I should be pious and then my children should be pious and their children should be pious. Imagine Shah Waliullah and then his six sons and then his grandson Shah Ismail Shahid rahmatullahi who did the, the jihad against the British Empire. How lucky he is. Is Shah uh, the first person to translate the Quran? Then his six sons, they carried on the work. They tried to establish Khilafah, they tried to do his Quranic work. And then when the British Empire came, his grandson, they, he's the one who did the jihad against them. So how lucky is Shaulillah Muhammad? It's not by chance that he's considered the Mujaddid of the 12th century. So in the same way, the Prophet wanted that there should be somebody from my family that is a true representative of my teachings from my family. And the Prophet ﷺ then tells us this. So he will first conquer Jaziratul Arab. He will first conquer what? The Arabian Peninsula. Okay? And after conquering the Arabian Peninsula, he will then conquer, he will fight for six, seven years. Six or seven huh? years and he will conquer the Roman Empire. He will conquer what? The Roman Empire. But then to help the Roman Empire, China, India, and a few other countries will wage war against the, the Mahdi. But as soon as the Roman Empire is conquered, this is the time where the Dijal comes in. This is the time what? When? What? Dijal comes in. I'm only telling you the story. I'll go to the Ahadith after I tell you the story. So then when I tell you the Hadith, I'll say, see, remember I said this? See, remember I said this? So just listen to the story. So the Mahdi himself will take care of conquering India and conquering China. And at that time when this will be happening, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a special gift of his because the Jewish community now will also be fighting against the Muslims after the Roman Empire will be, will be, Muslims will be victorious over the Roman Empire and then the Jewish, the Dajjal will appear and the Jewish community will also then fight against the Muslims. And in fact, in the army of Dajjal, there will be many Muslims. There's one narration that there will be up to 70,000 Muslims who will wear uh, like black hats who will be in the army of the Dajjal. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring Isa alayhi salatu wasalam down. Some narrations it says he comes down in an, on a ladder, like a stairway. In another narration it says the angels, they bring him down. In one narration it says he wears a yellow cloth on top of him. In another narration it says he wears a red cloth on top of him. Either way. So he comes down. And Isa alayhi salatu wasalam and the people that are with Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, they will fight against the Jewish community. While Mahdi and his people, they are fighting against the India and China. Okay? But they will meet at a common place, which is today a reality. The Prophet ﷺ said there will be a place in Syria that will have tall white pillars. Will have tall white? White pillars. That is today known as the Umayyad Masjid, which was not built at the time of the Prophet. Today, if you look at the Umayyad Masjid, it has tall white pillars. And the Prophet said وسلم, that the army of Dajjal will come and the Muslims will be inside the Masjid and it will be the Fajr prayer and Isa والسلام, will come. The Mahdi will be about to lead the prayer and then according to some narrations, Isa والسلام, leads the prayer. According to other narrations, the, the Isa والسلام, says, no, you are the Imam of the people. So I will... Pray behind you. So the Mahdi, he leads the prayer. The point being that here is where the Mahdi was getting ready to fight against the Jewish community. And he was had people 
his, his, uh, his troops taking care of India and China on the one side. And so the Mahdi will then start to focus when Isa alayhi salatu wasalam comes, he will focus on China and, China and India and the, the uh, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam will focus on the Jewish community because he was the prophet, uh, right? Rasulun ila bani Israel. He was the Rasul to these people. He was the messenger to these people. And the ahadith say that as soon as Dajjal sees Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he will start to melt. And even though he would die just by melting, but just to be extra sure and to tell the people for sure, he dies, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam will take his huh, sword and kill him with this. Now, the other thing that happens is, when the Mahdi will start, now we're going back. When the Mahdi will start his gathering the people and the people, how will the people know that the Mahdi is here? What will happen is, the Roman and the Muslims, they had an alliance, as I mentioned. And when this alliance breaks, the Roman Empire will send an army to attack the, the, the army of... Keep this in mind, by the way. If there's anarchy, right, it's all chaos. In that chaos, there will be a person who will be, well, would have been before, in the days that there was order in society, would have been recognized as part of royalty. People will force him under allegiance. No, you have to take our allegiance. And he, in that chaos, will start to bring what? Order. Huh? He will start to bring order. And one of the things that will happen is when the Roman Empire sends an army to attack the Mahdi. And by the way, this war will last for a very long time. And in the chapters of Hadith, this is called Kitabul Malahim. You know, uh, Laham, what Laham, Malahim means? Butcher. You know, butchery. So many people are going to die. And there will be battles after battles after battles. And so the Mahdi, this army will come to attack the Mahdi and it will get sunk into the ground. And that will be the sign for the Muslims around the world that that is the Mahdi. That is the one, that is the person who is organizing people in a proper way. And this is why the Prophet told us that when you see him, crawl to him if you have to. Crawl to him if you, if you have to crawl to him, crawl to him to be with him. Now hold on, I'm not done. When the Muslims will see that, and there are some narrations, by the way, I want to mention some of the weaker narrations. What I'm about to tell you is to fit in the whole story. I'm going to give you some of the what? Weaker narrations. They're not that well authenticated, but they're there. There will be, when the covenant between the, the Christians and the Muslims will break, there will be some person in Africa who will stand up to help the Mahdi. He will join hands with Mahdi. He will probably be a Muslim. And he will have a fleet of huge ships, 40,000 ships, like warships, you can say. Because the Ahadith uses the word Safina. Safina is, you know, Fulk is a small ship. Safina is a, a large ship. He have 40,000 large ships to help the army of the Mahdi. The other thing that will happen is that the Muslims that will be in Kufa, the Muslims that will be in Khurasan, they will stand up to help the Mahdi. So this is why Allah subhanahu, uh, the Prophet sallallahu said, يَخْرُجُونَ مِنَ الْخُرَسَاتِ رَايَعْتُ السُّودِ لِيُوَتِّهُ سُلْطَانُهُ يَعْنِ مَحْدِي So the people from Khurasan, where is Khurasan today? It's the part of Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, this area. People from that area will rise up in that because the Muslim world would have been completely decimated. This has to be understood. And it will be so bad that forget about protecting your iman. The situation will be that you'll, you'll have to be worried about protecting your life. And the Prophet ﷺ says, in then those times, the best thing to do is to break your sword and to be like the brother, the son of Adam who, who let his brother kill him and to stay in the houses. And particularly, by the way, the fitna, this whole fitna will be most severe where? In which part of the world? Arab. The central place of this, you can say, Muslim Holocaust will be the Arab world. And Muslims will rise from Khurasan to help the Mahdi. And then this army, that's, and then there's another hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, that another group of people from Kufa will rise to help the Mahdi. So in other words, when Muslims see that they're getting victory, 
And uh, the hadith goes, you know, the Prophet ﷺ said that Muslims will have victory over Jazirat al-Arab, then Muslims will have victory over the Roman Empire, and then the Muslims will have victory over Dajjal and his army. So this is a sequence that will happen. But the point I'm trying to make here is, is that when the Muslims fight against the Roman Empire, even India will start fighting against the Muslims. China will start fighting against the Muslims. And at that point, Muslims, pious Muslims who would have preserved their iman, even though Muslims would have been scattered, pious Muslims would be what? Scattered. But this would be now a reason for Muslims to start having an organized way, uh, a way of organizing themselves. Now, now let me just mention here that the Mahdi, he, like I said, he will be ruling for how long? Seven, the Prophet said. Two, nine. There are other narrations, by the way. There's one narration that says five years. And there's one narration that says six years. So there's like, you see the point, right? And just like Omar bin Abdul Aziz ruled for a very, what? Short time. Okay? The Mahdi will also be in the scene. If you see, if you read the ahadith of the Mahdi, he's basically in the scene as far as the, war, the wars are concerned. But after the war, after the wars, you don't see the mention of his names. You see the mention of the name of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And so, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam is the one who's going to rule, basically according to uh, some of the mutawatir hadith that have a strong sanad basically, that he will, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam will rule the world for how many years? For? 40 years. Okay, but now the question is, what has this got to do with us here and today? It's a good story. It's going to happen. Because you know why? Because Sadiq al-Masduq said it. Because Rasulullah said it. Why is it important for me to know this? Why is it important for you to know this? Why is it important for us to know this in Laylatul Qadr? The reason number one is, is that you have to understand that the rise of Islam will initially not happen in the hands of the Mahdi. The rise of Islam will initially what? Not happen in the hands of the Mahdi. The rise of Islam will initially happen by the Muslim Ummah itself. And when the Muslims will be in this peace that will last, uh, uh, they say up to nine years, the narration say that the peace will last for nine years. There will be khulafa. And when this khilafa will be in danger, when this what? Khilafa will be in danger. The rise of Islam will be in danger. And on one side, on the other side, the power structures would be changing. And so when this khilafa would be in danger, at that time, this person, who has a similar name to the Prophet Muhammad bin Abdullah, will rise. The, the chaos will throw a personality. Just like the Dajjal. Dajjal will be somebody that there's this chaos. That chaos will throw up a personality. And so I want to mention some of the ahadiths now. Now listen carefully. This may be a little bit dry for me to read Arabic and translate. But if you want to understand the subject and understand what I'm saying, then you have to... I'm not going to go through all the ahadiths. I will read this hadith to you. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَيَقْتُلْ إِنْ إِنْدَ الْكَنْزٌ ثَلَاثُ كُلُّهُمْ مِنْ إِبْنُ الْخَلِيفِ ثُمَّ لَا يَصِيرُنَ إِلَى وَاحِدْ مِنْهُمْ So the Prophet ﷺ says, there will be three sons of the, what? Khalifa. And there will be a treasure that will be revealed. And I'm not going into that treasure that will be in Iraq. Okay? And this is why the Prophet said, Iraq, by the way, if you read Muslim history, Always the problems of the Muslim Ummah always came from Iraq. And this is why the Prophet says, this is where the horns of shaitan are. Even in the modern times, and even in the pre-modern times, when you look at the, all the different wrong aqidas, like, you know, the Mu'tazilites, and the Jabariya, and the Qadariya, and so on and so forth, and uh, the different uh, schools of thought that have kind of like deviated from Islam, this is like a central place and even today, with everything that's happening, it's this situation in Iraq that's going to perpetuate as the West fails to maintain order, right? This same situation will perpetuate throughout the Muslim world. 
and will make it. E- and I'll come to that, inshallah, if Allah wills. What I would like to do right now is I want to read to you some traditions of the Prophet وسلم, regarding this issue. So this is in the Sunan of Abi Dawud رضي الله عنه. He says in the Kitab al Mahdi. لا يزول لا يزولنا هذا الدين قائما حتى يكون عليكم اثنى عشر خليفة. This ummah will not come to an end until there are twelve اثنى عشر ها خليفة upon you. Okay. كلهم تجتمع عليه عمة. All of them will have the إجماع, the consensus, the love of the what? The people will love them. The people will want them to be their خليفةs. كلهم تجتمع عليه أمة. And then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول لا يزال هذه الدين عزيزا إلى إثنى عشر خليفة. The same thing. Right, let me just go to the next one. Okay, this is the one that I wanted to mention. أن أن أم سلمة زوجة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال يكون there will be a difference of opinion at the death of a Khalifa. Okay. And for this reason, there will be a man who is the Mahdi. He will run for safety from Medina and he will go to Mecca. And by the way, there are some narrations that say the first people to give allegiance to the uh, the Mahdi will be seven of the ulama of, uh, of Mecca. Seven, there will be seven ulama. There will be seven scholars. They'll give their allegiance. They'll say, well, you know, you're, you're a well-known person. You can lead us. You're a familiar face for the Muslims. You can lead us. And they will give allegiance to him. And when those seven scholars give allegiance, the rest of the people will have given allegiance. By the way, at this time, Mecca would be in shambles. Hajj would have stopped. Okay? And also... Uh, then when this group c- comes together, then they will start to organize themselves. And then you'll, s- let me read the, 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 the rest of the hadith. فَيَخْرُجُوا وَهُوَ كَاءَزْ And then they say, حَارَبٌ إِلَى مَكَّةٌ He will go to Mecca seeking security. فَيَأْتِي أُنَاسٌ مِنْ أَحْلِ الْمَكَّةِ So the people of Mecca will come to him. فَيَخْرِجُونَهُ وَهُوَ كَارِهٌ And they will, he, they will pull him out from wherever he's trying to hide. And he will dislike this. He'll say, no, I don't want to be your leader. Just leave me alone. And then, So they will give him the allegiance that, look, you're our leader. Take us as your leader. We give allegiance to you. We'll do whatever you say. You know where Maqam of Ibrahim is and the Rukun? Between that place, they will they give the allegiance to him in front of the Kaaba. Like I said, but the Kaaba, the Mecca as it is today, will be in total shambles. Saudi Arabia as it exists, Saudi Arabia will no longer have been existing at that time. And one of the proofs of that is that you'll see, as I'll read this hadith, and then the Prophet says, So people from Syria will come to him. Now, if it was the modern times, if people try to go from Syria to Saudi Arabia, can it happen? You can't, you can't do it without a comma, right? The, the visa. You need the visa. But the situation there will be people from Iraq will come, the people from Syria will come to join, the hand, join hands with the, the Mahdi. Okay? This is information that we already know. Most of us already know. The Prophet ﷺ said, سَيَخْرُجُونَ مِنَ الصُّلْبِ رَجُلٌ يُسَمَّ بِإِسْمِ بِإِسْمِ بَيْنَكُمْ Soon there will be a man that will come from my sulb, my, my, my lineage, who will rule with all of you with justice. Uh, and then, you know, Allah, the Prophet mentions so many things about the, his, his looks, how he looks. He will have a, you know, a fine face, a, a crooked nose, just kind of like a little bit, a hook nose, you call it, a hook nose. Uh, he'll have a hook nose, a broad uh, broad forehead. Uh, he will, according to Ali radiallahu an, he will have a um, what do you call that? A tilko kya kya English me? A mole on his face. Okay, and uh, so so he will be a good-looking uh, gentleman. And uh, so the next thing that I wanted to mention was is that, but before this, what I wanted to show from this hadith is that on the death, when will this happen? On the death of a. 
Khalifa. It's not what people think, which is that, oh, Islam is down right now, and then now the Mahdi is going to come, and we're going to have a rise. That's not what's going to happen. Because those 40,000 naval ships that I was talking about, whose children will be in there? That's what, that's the point I'm trying to get across. Is that it's not like, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give you, you know, you know what? Muslimin have been suffering for so long, so let me give them manna and salwa. Instead of manna and salwa, we give you Mahdi and Isa. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be something that's well deserved. And it's, it's going to be something well deserved, well earned. And Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, yes, he will be a complete miracle. A complete miracle. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The world will be so different that the Prophet said that the best of the horsemen, the best of what? Horsemen from the non-Arab world will come to support the Mahdi. And in one of the wars with the Roman Empire, what will happen is they will fight in Syria. And one third of the army will run away. And they will, the Prophet says, the worst of the people. And then one of them will die. One third of the army of the Mahdi will die. And one third of the army will be the one that's victorious. Okay? This is a famous hadith. And so, uh, the point was to say it'll be many, many wars. It'll start with, it will start in Syria and end, then Mahdi will, st- he will defend himself in Syria and then he will go up towards Constantinople. And the Muslims of Turkey, Muslims of what? Present day Turkey, at, by that time would have been occupied by Christian forces basically. And what will happen is, the Muslims in Turkey, the Prophet ﷺ said, they will gain victory by their adhkar. By their what? Adhkar. And you know today, if you study Turkey, they're a people, they are a people that like to do a lot of dhikr. They are a people, the Turkish people, they like to do a lot of dhikr. Anyway, that's a side issue. So the Mahdi will go to Constantinople, fight there until there's victory. And then from there, the Mahdi will go to India and then to China. And he will conquer all of this area. And Isa will take care of the Jewish community. Okay? And they will be completely annihilated for the most part. So this is, from there, the story of the Mahdi per se comes to an end. But the Mahdi will witness on behalf of the Prophet the rise of is the globalization of of Islam. The Prophet ﷺ was talking about how the Ummah will be in a decline. The Prophet was talking about how the Ummah would be what? In a decline. And Aisha radiallahu anha says that how can that be when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Huwa alladhi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa deen al haq li yudhirahu ala deen kulli. How can that be that the deen will be in decline when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he sent his messenger with the guidance and the deen so it's dominating everything. This is the question Aisha radiallahu anha asks the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, yes Aisha, this is true, but this will happen. This, this ayah will find its completion in the end of times. Now the other thing I want to mention is when we look at the alamat al sa'a Alamat uh, al means the signs of the hour, meaning which hour? When the day of judgment starts, right? The sa'a is the moment where the earth starts to shake, okay? So the signs, the ulama, they divide it into two types. There's the alamat al-kubra, the big signs. And how many are they? The big ones. Ten. And the small signs are many, 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 many right? They will make tall buildings. There will be something. I mean, it's a very interesting topic. Uh, just to have a little bit of understanding. That, that the Prophet said, Sallallahu there will come a time where the man's hip will talk to him. You've seen the beepers? There will come a time where a man's hip will talk to him. And there's so many things. So many, so many ahadiths that are so like interesting uh, regarding this issue. But anyway, moving forward. The Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tells us that, okay, so there are big signs, and then there are what? Small signs. The coming of the Mahdi fits where? This is one of the major points I want to make. What are the ten big signs? The coming of the smoke. There will be a black smoke that will cover the earth. 
that might be because of the environment or some asteroid that'll come, Allah knows best. I'm not going into that right now. The second is the coming of Dajjal, right? And then Ya'juj and Ma'juj. And you notice in the Ahadith, the Mahdi, or in the coming of Isa, Dajjal, and Ya'juj and Ma'juj is amongst the ten. But what you notice is the Prophet doesn't mention the Mahdi amongst the big signs. You notice that? But when you look at the sequence of events, it's clear that the Mahdi will be there alongside Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. I mean, the Mahdi will be there before. The Mahdi will come first. Then when there is victory to the Mahdi, then that's when the Dajjal will come. And then that's when Isa alayhi salatu wasalam will come. But the point I'm trying to make is, Isa, the Mahdi is very close to the bigger signs. The what? The big signs of the Day of Judgment that you know the Day of Judgment is here, basically. And so, we are still in a time frame where we have not seen any of the big what? Big signs. No dabba has come, no like animal from the land has come that speaks to us. The sun hasn't risen from the, instead of the what? It hasn't risen from the west. So these are amongst the big signs, right? So the coming of the Mahdi is amongst the last things that will happen in the life of this world. So this concept that we have, that, you know, the Mahdi will come, and also, by the way, the Prophet ﷺ says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَبْعَثُ عَلَىٰ رَأْسِ كُلِّ مِئَةٍ عَامٍ مَنْ يُجَدِّدُ لَهَا دِينَهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spends and sends in the beginning of every century someone who what? Revives what? The deen. The beginning of this century is gone. The beginning of this century is what? Gone. Now we can expect him in the beginning of the what? The 15th century of Islam. Because he will be a mujaddid. Like I said, his relationship with Umar bin Abdul Aziz. His relationship with what? Umar bin Abdul Aziz. He will be the last mujaddid of the ummah. And being the last khalifa. And being a witness on behalf of, or the second last Khalifa, being a witness on behalf of the Prophet Wasallam about the globalization of Islam. And at that time, it seems like all systems would have failed. It seems like what? Because people will be back to riding horses, fighting with swords. That's what it, that's what you see. So the question for us is, Oh, this is stories. No, no, no. The question is, what happens to the modern world? What would happen to the modern world that we would lose the technology as we know it? In fact, it will be the Dajjal at that time who will control a lot of this technology. I don't have time to go into it, but there's a hadith of the Prophet Wasallam. Dajjal will control the resource of the world like, a, like, a, like the honey gathers the bees. All the resources will be under his fingertips. He will have technology, science of the modern times, plus magic. Highest level of magic and highest level of technology on his side. And on the, Mus the Muslim and the rest of the world will be without that technology. And so what will happen to the world that the world will be so different in another very important way, which is that Everyone will go back to their religion. Secularism will be no longer seen. The Roman Empire will become very Christian. The Jewish people will become very Jewish. Right? The Hindu people will probably become very Hindu. This is the trend that things are going. We already find, even in today's times, that fundamentalism is on the rise in all religions. Whether it's Hindu fundamentalism or Jewish fundamentalism or Muslim fundamentalism, we're all going back to our roots as human beings. And so we find a world, when we read the ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ, we find a world that has gone back to its roots. Not only does it go back to its roots, it goes back to its old empires. The Roman Empire. You know, the, 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 the empire of Dawud is what the Jewish people want to build. The temple of, you know, the temple mount. That has all to do with, in fact, it's the Star of David. It's the two uh, blue lines, that's the Euphrates and the Niles, with the Star of David in the middle. 
defining what is their territory. India wants Pakistan and all of its old territories back. What would be, you know, what they call ma, ma, Mahabharat. Mahabharat. Is I say it wrong? Mahabharat. Okay. Whatever he said. Okay. <laughs> so, so India wants its old territory back and it will probably get it. Pakistan may be perhaps in the future years. As things break down in the world, maybe the economics... Because look, one thing is very clear to me, at least for me. When Allah declares war against something, it can't last. It's very simple. And this system of riba, the system of what? Allah has declared war against it. فَعَزَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Know it that Allah has declared war against the system of interest. So therefore, it cannot last. And if the, if the point is that this system of interest cannot last, where does that take the world? Where, what position does that take the world? You know, I was talking about, let me point out very quickly, some differences between the modern times and the postmodern times. This will be very important in order for you to frame this. What is modern times and how is modern, what, is, what characterizes modern times? Modern times is the time, one of the characteristics of the modern times is that the West is the center. What's the characteristic? What? The West is the center. So when you go back into colonialism, it's Italy, Dutch, British, Germany. These are the centers of the world. As you move into the postmodern world, you find Japan and China and India. You find these countries also becoming part of the, what? The hierarchy of things. You see what I'm trying to say? So one thing that's happening already is that the things are moving away from the West. The things are already moving what? Away from the West and the centralization of Western power is moving out. What's another thing that's happening is, you know, we talk about a lot in America about outsourcing, for example. You know, we outsource our work overseas. But that means that the talent that they used to have here is now being taught in China, or there's a factory in Malaysia where they make shoes, for example. Now they know how to make the shoes. So the Muslims learn the art and the trade of manufacturing that once they knew over here, right? And in the same way, the other thing that's very different now is that it's no, the media can no longer be really controlled as it was one time. So for example, everybody had to watch the same channels. There was no choice. But now with the internet, now with the iPods, now with, you know, live streaming and all sorts of, of all sorts of outlets of media, people are watching and getting their news less and less from TV and more and more from other outlets like internet and iPods and so on and so forth. This changes the war of propaganda. And so what I'm trying to say is, is this, is that something is going to happen to the nation state environment that we live in today. They're going to miserably fail in Iraq. They'll fail because it, they didn't give it order. Therefore, they left it. Therefore, they were in that misery that they were before the coming of the Mahdi. Get what I'm trying to say? And so the modern settings will collapse. And somehow technology, which is a very simple thing, if you no longer have money to drill oil, all technology goes away. If Saudi Arabia, if Mecca is broken, Right? If Mecca is what? Broken in Arabia, there's no more Hajj. What question of oil is there? And plus, the oil can only be to a certain amount. It's not there forever. Right? There can only be X amount of oil. This is not, oil is not the, they would like to think it is, but it's not the water of Zamzam. Oil will come to an end at some point. And they're already saying maybe 30 years. So if we're looking at the Mahdi coming, now I'm, I'll give you the reasons for this. If we're looking at the age of the Ummah, by the way, this is a very important part of this. Looking at the age of what? The Ummah. This Ummah, its age is how much? How long is this Ummah going to survive? No, I mean, how long? From Rasulullah <coughs> till the Day of Judgment, how much time will there be approximately give and take? Who knows? There's a hadith in Sahih Bukhari. The Prophet ﷺ said, the time of Bani Israel was like the time from Dhuhr to Asr. And from the, and the, a, the time of my ummah is like the time from Asr to Maghrib. 
a little bit less. This is why you find in another hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet prayed for Allah because Bani Israel had two days. That means how many in Allah's eye? In Allah's two days is 2,000 years. So from Musa to Isa is how many? That is the Ummah of Bani Israel, 2,000 years. And they are our twin, what? Ummah. They are our sister Ummah. And so their age, the age of the Ummah of Bani Israel is a very important age for us to see our age. So Rasulullah did a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is also in Sahih Bukhari. The Prophet sallallahu said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a dua, Oh Allah, give my Ummah at least a half a day more. Meaning the first day plus half. half. That's around 1,000 500. It could be 500, 600, 700, but around that time. Okay? So the age of the Ummah is 1500, 1600 years old. And so when we're looking at these events, we also find, therefore, the events will now begin to, as time goes by in the next 50, 60 years, there is going to be, and by the way, there's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ about the Mahdi, and this is a weak narration, but the narration is is strong in the sense it makes sense. Meaning the narration is what? No, the narration is weak, but it's logical. It's going to be true even if the hadith is weak because that's just what a righteous person would do. And that is the Prophet said وسلم, that the Mahdi when he establishes his government first in Jaziratul Arab, right? And that means that Hajj will come back. Okay, when he establishes Islam in Jaziratul Arab, what the, one of the things he will do is he will he will convince the na- neighboring countries, convince what the neighboring countries to the authenticity and the truth of Islam. And let me mention a hadith that when the Mahdi rules for the seven years that the Mahdi will be ruling in Arabia. By the way, this se- this sequence seven to nine years that he will be in Arabia and then Mahdi. And then the Mahdi will go to India and China. And then after that, we don't find his name. Okay? During this time that he's in Arabia, you find this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, يَكُونُ فِي أُمَّةِ الْمَحْدِي إِنْ قُصِرَ فَسَبْعٌ وَإِلَّا فَتِسْعٌ My Ummah will have this man, the Mahdi, he will live between, he will be a ruler from seven to nine years. Then the Prophet says, فَتَنْعَمْ فِيهِ أُمَّتِي نِعْمَةً لَمْ يَمْنَعُوا مِثْلُهَا قِطْعٌ He will have the favors of Allah that no, that were never given to the Ummah before. Meaning, it will start to rain because, because he will be a just ruler. And because of his justice, all the barakas will come. And so there would be no ruler that would have been like him. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, he will, the fruits, they will come out and they will not leave anything behind. Uh, and money will be so much that it will be all stacked up. It will all be stacked up and people will come to the Mahdi and say, give it to me, give me this money that you have. He'll say, just take as much as you want and go. So there, this will be the condition in Arabia. People will come to the Mahdi and say, give, and he'll give them. You know what Brother Hamid was talking about? It's not just, it's about how we make life better here. And you know, this makes sense because the Prophet said, Al-Fakru yukadul kufr. When people are starving, you can't think about what? You can't think about it. Starvation comes in the way of the deen. So the Mahdi will remove the starvation. So that people can be focused on the deen. And think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thank Allah for his ni'mas. So on and so forth. And so, at this time, the Prophet said, sallallahu that just as there was oppression before this, there will now be justice. In another narration, the Prophet sallallahu said that as he would, he would, whatever he's able to carry in his cloth, by the way, if you want to know how different things will be, the initial people that will give allegiance to the Mahdi, they will be wearing, an, in, they will be wearing and imama, the sunnah style, which is not what is done in Saudi Arabia right now, by the way. They have that uh, aqul and the red thing, right? 
But the sunnah one, as you wear, see some of the ulama sometimes wear it, that's what those people that will give allegiance to him will be wearing. This is another very important hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Let me get into the boring stuff so we can like come to an end, inshallah. قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ يَخْرُجُ أُنَاسُ مِنَ الْمَشْرِقِ People will come from the east. يُوَطِّعُونَ مَأَ الْمَحْدِ يَعْنِ سُلْطَانُهُ People from the east will pave the way for the Mahdi. That when India will attack the Mahdi's army and China will attack the Mahdi's army, it will be people in this area of Khurasan and in other hadith, the area of Kufa, where Muslims will rise up and the best of the horse riders will come from this area. And I've actually seen YouTube videos of kids in Afghanistan today. They're like the best horse riders. There was like some documentary I saw about this. Like little kids, seven-year-old kids running horses like better than like, you know, a trained uh, jockey could. Okay, now this is a hadith that I want to mention that had a lot to do with what I was talking about. The Prophet ﷺ said, سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ستسالحكم الروم صلحا you will make صلحا with the Romans okay آمنا ثم تعزون أنتم وهم أدوا فانتصرون وتغنون وتغنمون and then you will fight with them and you will get the spoils of war with them and you will get victory with them. Then the Prophet ﷺ says, now I'll just mention this because it's hard for me to read here. The Prophet says ﷺ, then one man from the Christian people, the Roman Empire won, the Muslims won, they had a common enemy, we don't know who this is. Some people say it's the Jewish people and this is the reason. That when the Muslims will win this war and the Christians will win this war, a joint, what? Defense. So, somebody from amongst the Christian world will make a cross, a big cross. And he will say, see, we won, we won this war because of Christianity. And like I said, this, is no, though, this will no longer be those times where we can tolerate, what? Each other's opinions about you know, different aspects of religion. This will be back to basic religious life. And so, when the Muslims will see that, you know, the, the Roman Empire is saying that they get the credit because the Romans won, this will make the Muslims, what? Upset. So one Muslim will do something wrong. He will go and he'll break that cross, which was a wrong thing to do. But the reaction the Prophet said, وسلم, because of this wrong thing that this Muslim person will do, the reaction that they'll have will be one of treachery and tyranny. And so therefore, there will be a seven-year, eight-year war after that that the Muslims will fight with the, the Romans. And in the end, the Roman people, they will win. This is the hadith that I was mentioning. قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِذَا وَقَعَتْ مَلَاهِمْ When the, the third, by the way, Kitab al-Malahim, many of the modern ulama, they say this is World War III, basically, what we're discussing. This is World War what? World War III is what we're discussing. So, إِذَا وَقَعَتْ الْمَلَاهِمْ بعث الله بعثا من الموالي هم أكرم العرب أكرم أكرم العرب فرسا وأجود سلاحا يومئذ ويؤيد الله بدينهم. So there will be these people that will come that will not be Arabs that will be better horse riders and they will have better weapons. They will have what? Better weapons and they will Allah subhanahu wa taala will support the deen by them. And so they'll join the army of the Mahdi. And so there's so many narrations, but I thought what I really wanted to clarify was since this is Laylatul Qadr, and since we should be thinking about that how we can make Allah greater, we should not leave. This Ummah gets no manna and salwa. This Ummah gets what? No manna and salwa for this Ummah. There's no you know, you will have to work your way up in this ummah, it's very clear. Yeah, we have to take our own responsibilities. Then that, the events, the events, they will throw up a personality. 
That will happen automatically by nature. But the Muslims, they would have been prepared for that to happen. If today the Mahdi comes, how many people would support him anyway? So the point I'm trying to say is not even that. The point I'm trying to say is that the Mahdi is not going to come as a savior, as a free ticket to us. Nor is Isa alayhi salatu wasalam coming as a free ticket to us. We have to work our way up because the Mahdi will not be alone. He will have people that will what? Support him. A army of 40,000 naval ships whose children will be in there. Inshallah, some of ours, yes. That's the point I'm trying to make. Is that if the Mahdi comes, we wouldn't be able to support him today anyway. The Mahdi is going to have, he's going to be in an army. You know, Ali radiallahu an was asked by somebody once, you know, why are you such a bad ruler? Okay, because you know there was disputes happening. Why are you such a bad ruler? He said, well, because, you know, Abu Bakr and Umar had people like me under him. And I have people like you under me. So the point I'm trying to make here is, is that it's the Mahdi is the Mahdi, of course. But what will make the Mahdi Mahdi is greatly to do, has to do with the people that will be what? That will, that will be with him, that will support him, that will support him to death. What we have to do is we have to know, this is the point that I definitely will say, is we can never compromise our Islam, no matter what happens. Never compromise Islam, no matter what happens. And in the end, the glorious days will come back. And so, this is the story of the Mahdi, and I, I, didn't, I didn't want to go through all the narrations, and uh, I think... Uh, I'll just leave it here. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات.